Are we going to have an educational gap after COVID? And how effective is virtual learning? Keep watching on St. James Town TV to know the answer. I am working on building an escape room about two of the early pillars of Toronto, uh, Thornton and Lucy Blackburn. Um, so there'll be a start page with instructions. And on the start page with instructions, I'm going to have a filter that looks like this. So it will be um, my face and me as a teacher talking to the people that are doing the escape room. And I am going to um, tell them that they are time travelers. They've just gone back to the year 1834 when Toronto was founded. You are watching right now a real-time lesson preparation of an interactive lesson that will be presented online to students about the Blackburns, one of the most important and interesting topics in Toronto history. Um, my signal might be a little blurry because I'm speaking to them from the present uh, in Toronto, but they're hearing me in the past. And so what their mission is, is to learn as much about the Blackburn family as they possibly can, uh, solve some puzzles, and then come back to our time and tell people about the Blackburn family. Brox Hayward, a teacher at Rose Avenue Public School for grades three to seven, and the director of Lee Co Foundation Saturday Morning Literacy Program. Brox builds lessons as interactive games to keep the students engaged while studying from home. And the person will look like this. So they will tell the people about what they'll find in the space and they will uh, be able to investigate. This is not finished yet, but this is, uh, this is the main room. This is uh, the, the picture frame where the, the video of the face will be to explain how to find clues in this room. Um, now to get into the other rooms, this wagon wheel, is always going to be a link to the barn. Anytime you see a wagon wheel in here, you click on that and it will take you to the barn. If I hover over this, oh, I can tell that there's something clickable here. So I'll click on that. It'll open a new tab. This is an 1834 map of the city. And the clue is going to be something like, um, what year was the Goodrum and Warts windmill built? The Goodrum and Warts windmill uh, was really, really close to their house. I am basically going to make it like a where's Waldo hunt, right? Where you're looking for hidden stuff. Well, I can see there's a windmill there, but it's really small. But I can zoom in on this map and I can drag it around. So this shows you like the earliest St. James Church, which later became St. James Cathedral, for whom St. James Town is named. So their house was down here. And the answer to the clue that the kids will have to put in is 1832. The engagement of students this year um, is very much based on what they are able to bring to the space and what their teachers are able to get out of them. Right. My learners in my class, we have a great time every day. We, we love coming to learn. And my attendance is always at 100% every day. We're going into week 29 of the school year, 100% attendance, incredible. 
Some mm-hmm. students have been very, very cushioned from the pandemic, right? Some students have their family that's able to sit there with them and do schoolwork with them. They talk together about schoolwork um, and other families, they're, they're having a very tough time putting food on the table. So much of my work as a teacher this year has been making sure that I check in constantly with families to make sure that they're doing okay. And if they're not to connect them to resources and to connect teachers to resources and to make sure that my, my fellow teachers, some of whom are very, very new, right? Could you imagine it's your first year teaching and you're like, okay, you're virtual. You have 40 grade eight students. Some of them don't have working cameras or microphones. Now teach them online, Mm. right? So the board has done a tremendous job this year with the resources that they've got, getting families connected to learning. But I feel like most people that I know, know at least one person who's had a real tough time connecting to learning because of the, the problems that they've got this year in their homes. And I would say for for anybody who's had problems like that this year, the best thing they can do is tell the principal of their school. Mm -hmm. So the principal of Winchester, the principal of Rose Avenue, Spruce Court, right? Whatever their school is, reach out and say, I'm having a tough time. And the principal will help you right away. Even if you've got a brand new teacher and they don't really know how to help, the principal will absolutely help. Homeschooling is not a new COVID invention. Many parents over the years decided to switch their kids to studying at home, away from regular school systems. However, they still engage them with activities, sports, libraries, and getting them to get more knowledge and social life skills. Could this mean that online education could be a substitute for conventional school system? I think that people are so complicated that people will have a wide array of different reactions to virtual learning. Some people will go, oh my gosh, this is the best. I am so connected and so happy and this is great. And some people will feel exactly the opposite. In the beginning, like the first couple of months, first semester, September to December, it was really good. Online learning was really good. But like moving toward the second semester, like January to April, it was, uh, it got really tough. Cause like, you know, all like the screen time, it was really tough on the eyes. So like, that's when I really realized that I much preferred in-person learning. I find it difficult <laughs> in virtual. So, 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 yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's really difficult because whole day they have to sit in front of computer. And it's really hard to manage the children. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, okay, yeah, they can wake up a little late. And yeah, for older kids, it's okay, but like a younger, a little bit difficult. It's not easy at all. Not, not only for the parents, for the kids as well, because when they are at school, they have a break, they go out. But here it's like they sitting from 9 o'clock and then they have a nice lunch break and then they're sitting again to 3 o'clock. And for the kids, like my kids are 6, and 8 and 7 years old. It's like killing it, right? And then top of that, they have to do homework. I don't know what they want to do with the kids. That, that's not possible at all. The strictness that you're talking about has now been downloaded to families, right? In a classroom, you'd have an Ontario certified teacher and an early childhood educator in a kindergarten space. Now you have whoever the adult is, sometimes the older brother or sister that are acting as an educational assistant for the child. And they're trying to work at the same time if they're fortunate enough to be able to work remotely. And I say fortunate, but I think we all know how in the moment, unfortunate it feels, right? When you're trying to get your very young child to do online tasks and you're trying to focus on your work or you're trying to cook dinner for your family. Uh, It would be better if they go to school in person 
like uh, we are new here so they get chance to improve their language also if it was in person now everybody is stuck home parents work while teaching their children whether it is their preference or not and also kids do not have this outside interaction next year in the TDSB there will not be big central virtual schools like there are now because they're going to shift back to their brick and mortar schools so within each brick and mortar school there may be decisions made to have a virtual component i don't know what that will look like because there's hundreds of TDSB schools but each school will if there's going to be virtual, the, the virtual component of that school will be run by the principal, will have the, the staffing allocation, the budget allocation, everything will be connected to that school instead of it being virtual. And that will let us be much more responsive to our learners. Like online learning, it's better to do a half day at school so they can work the other day as a half day with homework. But both of it, the kids cannot even go out and mm. the stress for the parents who work. I work 12 hours as a nurse. For the small one, like uh, she don't want to stay, she doesn't normally stay a whole time in, in virtual class. So it's difficult and one, one parent, one of us uh, have to be with uh, her every every time, a whole day, I mean. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's difficult uh, in virtual, yeah. virtual class. In like, in the classroom it's better because yeah. online, sometimes there can be um, internet difficulty, so you can't really hear what the people are saying, and it might like affect my home. I hope they change because the kids not learning nothing. They're just going to be restless and they not remember. Even though we're sitting with them. I think up 12 hours they're sitting 10 hours for school. Because 8 hours and then they're school more. They're not learning nothing. Yeah. I think that we can all agree that the sooner things get closer to normal than they have been um, and the, the sooner it becomes more of a choice than a directive, uh, the, the better it will be for, for all of us. Um, I'm in school, um, I love math, and I Because like, you know, the communication with friends in person, communication with the prof in person, it's much more engaging, it's much better to learn, you know? So that's when I realized like now during summertime, because I'm off from school, that um, I'm like, I really hope that this upcoming school year, that um, in-person learning is back. Right, if a kid, if a kid's family says, oh wait, I, I don't want to be virtual, I need to go back, or, or the opposite, if it's run by the individual brick and mortar schools, the principals will be a lot more able to support those families. Like this year, there were two switch dates because doing it at the systems level was cumbersome. It was the best model that we have, but it was not as responsive as it, as it would be. I think that students need to interact with each other to socialize. And I think that it's a challenge especially for only children. Like I have an only child, he's three. And uh, I think that the less time he's had to play with friends socially, um, the, the, the bigger challenge he's having this year. All he wants to do is play with friends. I'm worrying about them being kids, right? Yeah. Because they're gonna be only one time kids, right? And they have to enjoy and be silly and playing with their, their friends. That's the part. I feel they missing not the learning part because as a parent you have to think about your kids right yeah. that part I'm not worrying about them I'm just worrying about them being kids virtual learning is a great tool to explore new ways of overcoming COVID and the lockdown and keep going with education it opens up great opportunities for students and helps them learning new technical skills however 
Social interaction plays a great role in the educational process and gaining experiences. We might not have an educational gap next year, but for sure we will be craving for more social interaction and exchanging live in-person experiences. Please do not forget to like, comment and share to our channel, follow us on all our social media platforms and for more information, please check out our website. Thank mm -hmm. you.